was on, but I know, but I know that the churches were full on Wednesday. The churches were full on Sabbath. You know, the only thing keeping us from coming together now is because we can't. But I do hear people's interest in spiritual things all of a sudden starting to peak. People are talking about prophecy. People are talking about the last days. Hold on for a second. What are the people saying? What are the answers that they're giving? I don't know. Is the coronavirus, is it a sign that Jesus is about to come? Ah, can I blow your mind real quick? Somebody said no. Thank you very much. Good answer. Good answer. Somebody said yes. Good answer. How about this? It's none of your business. It's none of your business. Look, y'all, let me tell you something right now. And this is, look, for real, I need y'all to hear me. When Jesus is coming, is none of your business. How about that? And it is not the responsibility of Christians to try to figure out when he's coming. Because guess what? It ain't none of your business. Look at your neighbor. <laughs> I'm, I'm so mad that I'm not in, in a building right now because I can see y'all touching each other. I, I, this would be a good moment to say high five your neighbor and say neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. <laughs> Mine, Mine. Your business. <laughs> oh, man, I'm about to help you right now. Oh, listen, coronavirus, coronavirus and whether this is connected to Christ coming in the next 10 years, the next, the next five years, is it going to happen next week? And we also saw, those of you who are Bible students, you know the Bible teaches in the last days that, 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 that governmental powers are going to start taking away our freedoms. Uh, they're going to start trying to be spiritual. They're going to start trying to tell us what to do spiritually. Did Donald Trump call a national day of prayer on tomorrow? Uh-oh, I know I can see some of y'all now. You got your juice, your prophetic juice is flowing. You're saying something is about to happen. Jesus is getting ready to come. Yeah. Guess what? I got a word for you right now. It ain't none of your business. Your business is not when. Your business is what? You should have wrote that down right there. Your business is not when. Your business is what? Can I teach it now real quick? Let's go to the text. Let's go to the text of Scripture, Matthew 24. Matthew, the 24th chapter, Matthew chapter 24 is, is commonly known as the last day chapter in the Bible. You can also find this in, in Mark, I believe, chapter 14. You can also see this in Luke chapter 21. The Gospels are giving us a picture based on a question that came from the disciples. They were like, look, uh, man, isn't this temple, isn't it beautiful? They were like temple worshipers. And that's why the Lord had to destroy that temple. Maybe that's why God has allowed coronavirus to show up to push us out of our buildings. Because many of us have been worshiping our buildings thinking that the, the weekend worship was the identity of the church. But how many know we don't need to have a building to be a church? As a matter of fact, the church ain't a building. The church is a people. But anyway, they were so, like, enamored with the building. They were offended when Jesus said, Jesus said, listen, destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up. He wasn't talking, he was talking about the building, but he was talking about himself. Because the attention was never the building. However, they glamorized and they, and, they, and they romanticized the temple. But notice what Christ's response is in Matthew 24. Watch this. I want you to pay attention. Get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. Take a few notes, the, the scriptures that we're going to look at. Uh, uh, mark this on your Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 11. Mark that. Mark that down. Write that down. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 11. Also write down 1 John 4, 18. 1 John 4, 18. And also take a look at Matthew 24, 3. Now, before I jump into Matthew 24, 3, I want to just back up just a little bit to show you something here in 1 John. Now, watch this. This is why. See, the thing about all of these things happening immediately increases people's anxieties if they do not know the word of God. They begin to get anxious. They begin to want to know when things are going to happen. But notice what the scripture says. If we're going to mature and grow in love, notice what 1 John 4 says. It says, there is no fear. Did you catch that? It says, there is no fear. How about y'all on my prayer line? Can y'all hear me right now? There is no fear in love. Mm. Watch this, y'all. But perfect love, is, that's a key word there. That word perfect is key. The word perfect there is key. Love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfect. Ooh, watch this. And whoever fears has not been, whoever fears has not been, whoever fears has not been perfected. That word perfected in the Greek is the word teleos. It is the same word that Christ used when he said it is finished when he was on the cross. It basically means to be mature, to be full age. 
You are not emotionally mature if you are operating in fear. Because perfect love casts out immaturity. Gosh, come on. Uh, oh, God. Can I, have I, can I get somebody in, 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 the, in the house today to talk back to me? Yeah, Someone yeah, in the prayer. Yeah, yeah. Listen, perfect love casts out immaturity. What is immaturity? Immaturity is a spirit of anxiety. It's the spirit of, oh, what's going to happen next? It ain't none of your business. You don't got to worry about when it's going to happen next. I remember my mama used to do I think my mama's watching right now, so I'm about to talk about you, mama. I remember, you know, we used to always ask our parents, when, why, where are we going, How, when are we going to get there, what time is it going to happen, what time, what, you know, I mean, all kind of stuff. And my parents be like, this ain't none of your business. You just need to sit and wait. You need to sit and wait. Why don't you do what I told you to do and stop worrying about stuff that has nothing to do with you? That rhymed, didn't it? I think I'm rapping. Somebody, help somebody, Jason. <laughs> I can't even say it again. I thought that would sound like I just, I just bust a rhyme there. Somebody shout bars. Look, y'all, it's not our business to worry about that. What is our focus right now? Our focus ought to be loving. Our focus ought to be loving. With coronavirus going on right now, there are so many opportunities for the church to love, but many of us are spreading fear instead of love right now. Oh, man, Lord have mercy. Notice what the Bible says in Matthew 24. Let's run through this real quick. The Bible says Matthew 24, verse 3. I'm going to bounce around. It says, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, talking of Christ, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, look at their question, tell us when. That ain't your business. Lord have mercy. Notice it's our natural instinct when Christ, when we start hearing about uh, difficulty, the end of the world, that we want to, and, and signs happening, tell us when. Tell us when. That's their question. Tell us when these things will be. And the Bible says, and that will be the sign, uh, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Notice their question. Your question is very simple. We want to know when. when. And tell us the signs. Now, this is very critical for you to understand what Jesus is about to say next, because people so often misinterpret Matthew 24. Hang in there with me real quick. All right. We're going to break this down and we're going to let you go. Here it goes. Right. He says, he says, tell us when, 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 when we need to know when so we can be ready. Right. Because if we know when, then we can be ready. Ah, none of your business. Tell us when and what will be the sign. There it goes of your coming and the end of the age. Now, watch Christ's answer. Buckle your seatbelts. Watch this. And Jesus answered them, and he said this, see that no one leads you astray. Amen? For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. Verse 6, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But watch this. Watch this. But the end is not yet. Not yet. Oh, my goodness. All my life, I've heard people say, oh, look at that war. Jesus is about to come. Oh, my goodness, coronavirus. Jesus is about to come. Oh, my goodness, you see that earthquake? Jesus is about to come. Right now, in Kenya, they have billions of locusts because of a famine and a plague. Jesus is about to come. Our natural reaction, we see these things. We say, uh-oh, it's time to get right, y'all. <laughs> uh-oh, did y'all see what Donald Trump said? Time to get right. Uh-oh, there was a tsunami trying to get right. Oh, my crime Everywhere, knowledge increasing. It's time to get right. Notice what Christ said. He said, look, he says, when that stuff happens, he says, this must take place, but the end is not yet. Mm, I don't know if y'all are smelling what I'm trying to cook here. Huh? Coronavirus doesn't necessarily mean that the end is at hand because when is not your business. Oh, I don't know if you're hearing me now. Let's keep stepping here. The Bible says in verse 7, For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Can I pause here and tell you that when Christ said that, he was talking to the disciples about what they would experience before 70 A.D. when Jerusalem would be destroyed by fire? Do you realize that everything that we have just read about that's been prophesied in Scripture has already happened? It's happened thousands of years ago. This happened at least 2,000 years ago. Everything in Matthew 24 that, that is considered a sign, as we have interpreted, has already happened. So where are you at? How come you're not here yet? Huh? Are you, are you wrong? Is, is the, is the, is the Bible, is the, what's going on here? Why isn't he here yet? I will tell you what the problem is. The problem is, is you ain't supposed to be concerned about when. Hmm. I don't think I'm, I, 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 I'm struggling right now because it's getting quiet. It's getting quiet. It's quiet on the prayer line. It's, it's quiet in, in, in Facebook world. 
Listen, y'all, watch, watch how Christ works here. We have not looked at this text properly because we have put so much fear forward. We have tried to scare people into getting ready for the return of Christ by pointing to different things that are happening. And that is not the purpose of these things. We're going to show you in a minute. And the Bible says in verse 8, and all these woo, are but the beginning of birth pains. When you see wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, all these things happening in diverse places, the Bible is not saying, the Bible is saying that's just the beginning of the end. And all of the things that Christ has said, oh, Lord, I, I, somebody hears me on the prayer line. Praise God. All these things that Christ has said have already happened. Here's a danger. I'm just going to jump in and say the danger is when we're trying to figure out where the end is. Let me show you all something on the board real quick. Let me work with this board. This is where we are right now. We're in the present. Where are we, everybody? In the present, all right? Right here, March 2020. That's where we are. And then we know, because God, because Jesus said he was, Jesus is coming soon at the second coming. So we're right now living in the present. However, we don't know when the end is. We don't know. We don't know when that is, and Jesus doesn't want us to know. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. He does not want us to know when he's coming because he he doesn't want us being concerned about when he wants us to be concerned about the last thing he told us before he left. Your your concern is not when your concern is go. Lord, he said these are the beginning. These are the beginning. All right. Verse nine. Let me keep stepping. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. That already happened. And you will be hated by all nations for, for my sake. That already happened to the disciples. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. That already happened. Verse 11. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. That's already happened and it's still happening. Verse 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. Listen, man, when they invaded Jerusalem and burned Jerusalem in 70 A.D., do you realize that people after that time were eating their own children? That would, listen, that was, if that were to happen right now, it would be a national human crisis and disaster. This stuff been happening. If you want me to just go ahead and tell you, when are the last days then, Pastor? I'm confused. The last days, it started when Jesus left. We've been in the last days. Yeah. Folks talk about now, coronavirus is out. Oh, my goodness, Jesus is about to come. Jesus been about to come. For as a day is as a thousand years with the Lord. But your problem is, is you're too focused on when instead of focus on what God said. But the Bible says in verse 3, it says the love of many will grow cold. But, but verse 13, rather, but the one who endures to the end, that's the key. Oh, I don't know if y'all see this thing. Yeah. He's like the key is do, can you endure waiting? Yeah. Yeah. One of the hardest things in life is to wait oh, yeah. and to not know when your blessing is coming from. Can I just talk to somebody for a second? Is there anybody right now that needs a blessing from the Lord? You can talk to me, Pastor. I have, come on. Talk back to me, Pastor Johnson. I hear you. I hear, but Pastor Johnson's in need of a blessing, right? Like some of you are waiting on God to do something. And why won't God just go ahead and tell you? Why won't God just go ahead and tell you? Because he's trying to grow you. He's trying to mature you. And we don't mature by getting. We mature by waiting. That's good. Y'all not hearing me. It says because the one who endures. How, who's going to be saved? The person who knows it all? No. The person that endures. And many of us trying to math, I just, if I know this and I know this and I know this, I know this date and I know that date. Listen, all those things have their place, but those things don't help you to get ready. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The Bible says in verse 14, and here it goes. And this gospel, watch this, watch this mind blowing text. And this gospel mm, of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all and then the end will come. There goes your sign right there, sign number one. How do we know? How do we know? You want a win sign? Here's the win sign. The win sign is the gospel being preached. Mm-hmm. But, Pastor, that isn't really a sign for real, for real, because uh, that means we just doing stuff. we just out here sharing the gospel. we out here changing people's lives. we out here, <laughs> like, feeding the hungry. we out here clothing the naked. we out here visiting those that is in prison. we out here making a difference. I don't understand. Because he does not want you to be concerned about when. He wants you out here preaching the gospel. And as we're preaching the gospel, it, that is the sign that he's coming. And see, it don't really make sense. See, like a sign we want is like the sign you see on the street. Next exit, Euclid. Right. So if you're going down 271, next exit is Euclid Avenue. Oh, OK. I know it's coming. Guess what? That's not how it works. Well, your sign, knowing that the next step is coming, is getting your hips up <laughs> and going out there and telling somebody that Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. 
coming certainly, coming for real, coming whenever he says. Spreading the love of God is how we know that Christ is coming. So waiting, knowing when is not the key. The key is getting out there and doing what he said. Uh, All right, watch this. Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. That's already happened. And the moon will not give its light. That's already happened. And the stars will fall from heaven. That will be happened. The powers of heaven. That's already happened. Now, watch this. Now, here, just blew my mind. Y'all, here's the sign. We're almost done. Here is the sign of the coming of Christ. They're asking Jesus, when? When will we know? When will be this? And what will be the sign of these things? Tell us when. When is it going to happen? When is it? This, when I read this, like, with fresh eyes, I was like, oh, snap. He really don't want us to know nothing for real, for real. Notice what Christ gives us as the sign of his coming. This is the text right here, y'all, that made me preach this today. I scrapped my whole sermon. I said, I got to go here. Watch this. The Bible says, Jesus says, then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. And then all, the sign, you got this? What, what, where is it going to happen? It's going to happen in heaven. Oh, man. Oh, snap. What's the sign of his coming? Like, I thought a sign is supposed to tell me when it's going to happen. Ah, oh, man. Watch well, this. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Uh Uh-oh. And they will, uh uh-oh, see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Oh, my goodness. Did you just see what happened here? (laughs) Jesus said, here's the sign. The sign is when you see me in the clouds. <laughs> How, when, when are we going to know? Tell us when are these gonna things happen. He said, that ain't none of your business. He said, the only sign I'm giving you is when you see me in the clouds. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Yeah. He said, it ain't none of your business to be worried about how and if it's going to happen. There's a reason why I'm telling you this. The when question is answered when he shows up. That's because God wants your confidence not to be in times and in dates, but he wants your confidence to be in what he said. He said, the only sign I'm giving you is a sign of Jonah. (laughs) The only sign I'm giving you is when you see me in the clouds. You don't don't got to know nothing. You just need to wait until I show up. And that's all you need to know. Uh, The Bible says in verse 36, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the sun. Now, I, I, now, I know this messes with our head, but only the Father. Now, if Jesus don't know when he's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's a question mark, right? Yeah. Uh, the Father is going to tell the Son when it's time to move. Uh-huh. And the scripture says it's not even up to the Son. Uh-huh. The Son is waiting on the Father. So why are you running around here trying to tell everybody, uh-oh, coronavirus is about to happen Uh, That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to share the good news that Jesus saves. That's your way. Because when ain't going to do nothing for nobody. Because what if he don't come for another 20 years? Huh? Somebody shout, be ready. Ain't no time to talk about getting ready. ready. The only thing that time does for you is like, for example, you know, like, you know, hey, what time are you going to get home? Uh, I'm going to be home in about an hour. And that way, like when I was a kid, my mom would tell us to clean up the house. And so we knew what time my mom got off work. And so what we would do is we would procrastinate and clean up the house at the last minute. Listen, and can't nobody clean up a house at the last minute like me. I can throw stuff in the closet. Come on, say amen. Amen. I know how to throw dirty dishes in the dishwasher. Come on, say amen. Like, I know, listen, I know how to just like, you know, uh, straighten up is the term. Like, yeah, straighten up. Like, I can just straighten up real good. That ain't cleaning, cleaning, cleaning for real, for real. And so by the time my mom got home, my mom would get home, and she would look at the cleaning job we did, and she'd be like, uh, this house ain't clean. You know why? Because we waited to the last minute. We were basing our readiness on when she came instead of basing our readiness on when she said that she said she was coming home. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, let me go on ahead and get on out of here. (laughs) Notice what he says. He said, this is what you need to do. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Black Lives Matter movement. He says, therefore, stay woke. He he said, this this is what you need to be doing. He said, you need to stay woke, right? Stay awake, for you do not know. That's the spirit. Just stay ready. Don't go to sleep. Now ain't the time to be skipping out on church and I'm not sure if I'm doing the God thing right now. I'm trying to figure myself out. I'm telling you, it's not the time to do that. Not because I I know when Jesus is coming. Just because you don't know when he's coming. You got to be ready. Oh, Lord. You don't know. Oh, Oh, boy. He says in verse 34, therefore, you also must be ready. Come on, somebody shall be ready. Be ready. ready. Somebody shall be ready again. For the Son of Man is coming 
at an hour you do not expect. Now, hear me now. Watch that line. You don't know. This is critical. I think a lot of us think that the way that prophecy is going to unfold is going to unfold in such a way where we're going to have an idea. I'm going to go with the word. The word says you're not going to know. So therefore, stay woke. All right, here's my last few points I want you to write down. Write this down. Somebody post this in the thread. Here are the points that I want you to get out of this message. Point number one, our focus should be on the certainty of Christ's coming, not so much the nearness of Christ's coming. Did you get that? Very good. Our focus should be on the certainty of Christ's coming and not so much the nearness of Christ's coming. In other words, our focus is on he said it. Yeah. Period. Yeah. So whenever the end. So whenever it happens, it happens. When it happens, it's not my business. Yeah. I'm going to stay woke today like he could come tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to stay woke today like he could come this afternoon. Yeah. I'm going to stay woke today like he could come 100 years from now. My focus is not when. My focus is that he said it. Yeah. It's the certainty of what he said. Because I just believe the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Mm -hmm. The next point I want you to get, write this down. Signs are not so much for the future. Get this. But to teach us how to live in the present. Yeah. Oh, I just, I just said something there. Yeah. The purpose of signs are not to give us a clue. Uh-oh. He about to come, so now I can change my life. No, the pur uh, in the future, the purpose of the signs is not for this. The purpose of the signs is for the present. Are uh, y'all hearing me right now? Yeah. The purpose of the signs are for the present, y'all, not for this. The purpose of signs is to teach us how to number our days right now. It's not for later, it's for now. It's not for later, it's for now. It's not for later, it's for now. Coronavirus is not for later. Coronavirus is to get some of our attention that it's time to repent right now. Yeah. Okay. Come on watch this, watch this. Watch what your girl says. She says, the shortness of time is urged as an incentive for us to seek righteousness. And to make Christ our friend. You know, in other words, uh, people, you already hear people say this in church, especially in a lot of our churches. Uh-oh, uh oh the, the Lord is coming. It's time to get right. Yeah. Uh-oh, hey, church, time to get right, church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your girl right here, and this is for all my Adventist friends, Ellen White says, she says, look, the shortness of time is urged as an incentive. Y'all, She saying, y'all doing that. Y'all running around here telling everybody, uh-oh, time is short, get right. Watch what she says. I know y'all going to be shocked by this. Watch what she says. She says, this is not the great motive. It savors of selfishness. Ooh. Is it necessary? Watch this question. Yeah. Is it necessary that the terrors, coronavirus, earthquakes, locusts, is it necessary that the terrors of the day of God be held before us? Uh, Look what she says. She's like, do y'all need yeah. to see another virus? Yeah. Do you need to see yeah, yeah. another murder? Yeah. Do you need to see another catastrophe? Yeah. Do you need to see another political crisis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you need to see another fool in the White House? Yeah. Do you need to see all this stuff? Is it, do you need, come on, uh, if he, notice now, if you need to see that, yeah, so that will never convince you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got enough already. Yeah. There's nothing more that can happen. You know why? Because you got the cross. Mm -hmm. The yeah. cross is, oh God, yeah. the cross should be enough to persuade you to get yourself right. Mm -hmm. The cross should be enough to say it's time to repent. The cross should be enough to say it's time for me to lay between the porch and the altar and say, God, I need you in my life. That should be enough. She says, is this necessary? Watch what she says. I love this part right here. She says, to compel us? Is all this necessary to compel us through fear to right action? She says, this ought not be. Jesus is attractive. Oh, I love that. Did you catch that? Yeah. She says, here's the thing that should motivate you, Christ. The thing that should push you, Christ. The thing that should motivate you to do with his will, the, the blood of Jesus, the thing that you don't need to see another catastrophe. Yeah. You don't need to see another sign. What you need right now is to fix your eyes to the hills from which cometh your help, to look to the cross. The, the Bible says it is the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the love of God that should motivate you to serve others. It's the love of God that should motivate you to give and not be selfish. It's the love of God that should motivate you to forgive others. It's the love of God that should motivate you to stop cheating on your spouse. Or It's the love of God that should motivate you to stop abusing using your loved one. Listen, it, it, not, all this stuff. Some of y'all are going to come back to church because you're scared of the virus. Stay at home. 
The thing that ought to motivate you is not fear. The thing that's to get, because listen, fear can't keep nobody. You be scared today, and the fear will wear off tomorrow, and next thing you know, you're going to be back in the club. Next thing you know, you're going to be back doing your own thing. Next thing you know, you're going to be back running the streets. But I'll tell you something that'll keep you. I know what'll keep you. The love of God will keep you. Paul says it's the love of Christ that constrains us. Hallelujah. Come on, Willie. I want you to start playing. Come on, Willie. I got to end this thing. Come on, Willie. I need you to start playing. Listen, y'all, the most effective motivation for a changed life is not fear, but love. But love. That's the most effective thing. It's the love of God. If love won't ma- motivate you, then Corona won't motivate you. Ooh, that's good. If love won't motivate you, then Donald Trump's act- activity in the White House ain't going to motivate you. If love won't motivate you, the National Sunday Law ain't going to motivate you. If love doesn't motivate you, some sign here, some criminal activity there, some other new catastrophe going on, it's not going to motivate you. We are motivated by love. Love is the thing that changes lives. Can I get a witness in here today? How many even know that? How many know that love changes? How many know I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me, now safe and mine. Love lifted me. Oh, I wish I had help in here today. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. And because love pulled you out of drugs and love pulled you out of alcohol and love pulled you out of prison and love pulled you out of running the streets and love pulled you out of your anger and pulled you out of your addiction and pulled you out of your struggle. If love pulled you out, oh, how many know that if you love, if he loved you, then you should love him. I don't know about you, but I don't need another political uprising. I don't need another conqueror on the sea. What we need is a word from the Lord. And the word of the Lord to us today is, I love you. I love you. I want to look into this camera right now and minister to somebody. Somebody needs to know that God loves you. And he loves you right now in the mess that you're in. Just as you are, Christ loves you. Listen, just block out of your mind that the city is shut down. Block out of your mind that we're not in a church building. I want to look into this camera and I want to talk to you directly. I'm telling you right now, no matter what you've done, Jesus loves you. I'm telling you right now, there is no sin that you can commit that the cross is not powerful enough to deliver you from. I'm telling you right now, there is nothing that you've ever done, no shame that you've ever experienced that is so deep, so damnable that Christ's love cannot pull you out. I just have one question right now. Is he worthy of your love? Is he worthy of your service? Is he worthy of your time? Is he worthy of your finances? Is he worthy of your commitment? Is he worthy of your weekend? Is he worthy of what you do for your, in your free time? Is he worthy of your, of your Bible study, of your prayer life? Is he? I just have one question. Is your life more important than his life? His life, he, did, he gave his only begotten son for you, and yet you have, many of us have the nerve to make our lives more important. Oh, we're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray, but I want Willie just to sing a little something right now to melt our hearts and prepare our hearts for this moment. And then we're going to take prayer requests, and we're going to start praying for you, and we're going to let you go. But somebody right now needs to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Somebody needs to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we're going to tune Willie's mic up right now as he gets prepared to sing this song. But I want, to just, I want you to pray with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, there's somebody right now who's watching that needs to simply just type in, I want to give my life to Christ. I want you to just type in right now. I want to give my life to Christ. And somebody's going to follow up with you. Maybe you need to inbox us in our messenger and say, I want to to be baptized. Uh, I want to to have Bible studies. Uh, No matter where you are, we'll minister to you. No matter what city you're in, we'll, we'll, we'll pray for you. We'll bless you. Right now, just as my brother gets ready to sing, I want everybody right now to just listen to the voice of God. I know you might be at home. There might be a lot of stuff going on. But right now is a moment that God wants to have with you. And I want you to give your life to him in this moment. Just let you surrender to him so you can hear his voice.
right now. There are many of you who are going through some difficult times. And we are living in difficult times. But the good news right now is that we serve a God who's already got this thing figured out. He ain't worried about this virus. He ain't worried about anything in this world because we know that our God is in total control. And guess what, y'all? I done read to the end of the story. I done read to the end of the book. And the end of the book says we have already got the victory. What I need you to do right now is that you, you need to know you don't have the victory if you are not in relationship with Jesus Christ. If there's anything in your life that you have not surrendered to Christ, you don't have the victory. The scriptures tells us very clearly faith is the victory. If you want to make a decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, I simply want you to text the word decision in the number that's right there in that thread. Text the word decision. Decision right there in the thread. They've given you the number. Just text the word decision. Or maybe you could just inbox me directly or inbox the church. But if you want to give your life to the Lord, text the word decision. Reach out to me personally and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to the Lord. Our church is a praying church. We want to pray for you. You might live in the city of Cleveland. You, and you like, as soon as this coronavirus is over, I'm bringing myself back to the house of God. I'm coming back. I'm coming home. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Isn't this cool? You don't have to walk down the aisle right now. All you got to do is text decision. All you got to do is inbox me right now. Inbox our church and say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's time for me to come home. It's time to be baptized. Time to be rebaptized. Time to come back full and committed to the Lord. At this time right now, I'm going to ask Pastor Johnson to come and just lead us in a time of prayer just before we end our time together. We want to take some prayer requests, so we're going to ask that in the chat. Now you can begin to um, put your prayer request there. Um, so I know that we see, I see Orlean Whitehead, let's pray for her family. Uh, we're going to ask you to go ahead and drop your prayer request in before we move into just a season of prayer. Danielle Ray, I see you, pray for my family. Charmaine Taylor, pray for my family. I'm going to take some from the prayer line. Prayer line, if you have um, something that you want us to pray for, you guys can begin to call that out now as well. You can call that out now as well on the prayer line if you have something that you want us to pray for. Taking requests. Pray for my family. Kimberly, we see you praying for your family. Danny, pray for my family. We're praying for you all. Marvin, all glory to God. Amen. Amen. Do we have any from the prayer line? Are there any prayer requests from the prayer line? We're going to take them from you right now. Patricia, we're praying for your family. Monique Graves, move date. Request move date. That's very specific. We're praying for you. Request move date, April 1st, 2020. Steph, we're praying for your family, for yourself, and for your church family. Angela, we're praying for your family. Keisha, we're praying for covering over a new project. Amen. We're claiming that for you right now in Jesus' name. Uh, we're praying for our sister and nephew traveling back from the Caribbean. Amen. We're praying for that. Daughters, grandchildren. Yes, continue. Put your prayer request. Put your prayer request. And what I want to encourage you all to do, as people are sharing their requests, I want you to look look at one. I want you to figure out, call somebody's name, pick somebody's name that you're going to begin to pray for and that you're going to begin to pray for. Well, I want you to do me a favor. If you have your phone or if you have a piece of paper um, that's near, I want you to write down some prayers. I want you to write down some requests, some things that you're going to be praying for. Uh, we're going to be doing this for the next few weeks. Uh, we're going to be praying just for the next few weeks. And so we want to ask you, I want to give you this opportunity to write down maybe three requests, three things that you're needing from God. We want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to grab a piece of paper. And I want you to just figure out three specific requests that you want to ask from God, that you want to pray for over the next several weeks. And something that you want to, to, to see from God. The building project. Amen. We want to continue to lift up our building project. Praying for co-workers. Medical staff. Amen. We definitely want to pray for all the medical staff. And we want to just say thank you to all the medical staff that's out there that's working around the clock. And they're working to keep us safe. We want to definitely pray for the community workers, bus drivers, homeless shelters. Amen. Amen. Come on, keep them coming. Someone has cancer. We bind that. In Jesus' name, we're praying over cancer. Amen. Employment for all that's needed. Exactly. There's a lot going on where people are losing employment, especially because of corona at this time right now. We want to make sure people's needs are being met. Uh, praying for, for grandsons. Um, amen. I'm telling you right now, the prayer line, they are praying. They're lifting you up. We're going to ask them to continue to pray. We're praying for homeless shelters. Sophie Thomas, Brian Thomas, give me names. 
I like that. I want you to drop names in. Drop names. If there's somebody specific that you're praying for, we're going to give you just a moment just to go ahead and do that. And um, we want you to continue to do that. I want you to continue to pray. Pray for Tiffany. Pray for my family. Pray for Tony. Family. Healed relationships. Bold confidence in his problem. Kids out of school. Oh, that's good. Father God, I just want to begin to pray for some of these things that are coming up, God. There's just so many things going on in the world. God, right now, somebody said kids from school. God, their kids are out of school for three weeks. God, there's so many kids that don't know what they're going to do, don't know where they're going to be, don't know what they're going to eat. God, we're asking that you would just um, be with every child that's going to be affected by what's going on right now. But God, our children in general, God, we want to bring bring the youth to you. Um, God, they're, they're growing up in such a weird time. God, there's so many things and so many distractions um, that could be coming across from them right now. Lord, I'm asking that you would just, that you would be with them, God, that you would help them to be able to focus on you and to be able to learn from you and to be able to know know you even in this state, even in the midst of everything that's going on. God, I'm lifting up people's families. God, there's every person that is on this this line right now, every person that's on, that's watching, God, people that are on the prayer line, God, we're bringing our families to you. God, everybody wants to pray for their family. We want to pray for our families because we love our families. God, there's so many, there's so much turmoil. There's so many things going on. There's so much dissension. There's so many different things. And so I'm asking right now that you would be a healer in families. God, I'm asking that you would heal broken relationships, God. God, I'm asking that you would heal uh, um, cancer. Someone's praying for cancer. Lord, I'm asking that you would heal that, God, that you would touch bodies that are sick. God, the hospitals right now are filled with people not only dealing with coronavirus, but God, there's so many other illnesses that are plaguing us. And God, we're asking that you would heal them, God, that you would touch them. God, that you would give them the, the, the patience and the strength that they need, God, that they might have the strength to continue to keep going. We're praying for somebody who's having surgery on their eye. Somebody's battling cancer. God, we want to lift up our building project right now. God, you know what's going on with that. Lord, I'm asking that you would just be with our church. God, I, I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful that you have us in a place where we are just, we're, we're open to whatever it is that you want to do, God. So God, we're asking that you would completely take all of our plans, God, and that you would make every single plan that we make yours. God, I pray that for this church and I pray for every church around the nation, God, that we just might be aligned with you, that we might be aligned with your mission, God, that we not might not be concerned about the wind, not be concerned about what what what's this and what's that and when you're coming and what, what we need. God, help us to be concerned with what we need to do, God. Help us to be willing to go. God, that's all you asked us to do. You asked us to go. God, we're praying for students who are preparing for exams. And students who are displaced, students who are having to leave. I know the schools are, the colleges are closed, God. We want to pray for um, those college, the kid, college kids who are in transition, who need to get home, who might not have money. God, we're asking that you would open up doors and make a way. We're praying for work relationships. I want to pray for relationships in general, God. I'm asking that you would heal relationships, God. The relationships that people are dealing with in their lives that seem like there's nothing. Somebody's dealing with on this line a relationship and they know absolutely they, they, they're done with it. They feel like they can't fix it. They feel like it can't be mended. They're over it. God, I'm asking that you would remind them that you can do it. God, I'm asking them that you would remind, remind them that, that you are the healer, God, that you can get in the midst of that situation, God, that you can make work relationships better, God, that you can make home relationships better, God, that you can get in the midst of that and you can switch mindsets and you can switch hearts, God, and you can allow us to just truly to be able to have relationships with others. As he's just singing, I'm going to call some more out. What I also want to do as I'm calling them out, I want to encourage you to begin praying. I want you to pray where you are. God, I want you to begin praying. praying for, we're praying for the sick. We're praying for those who are stuck from travel ban in other countries. Yes. Zakaila, Monique, Tanisha, Kadisha. Listen, people are putting names in. I want you, all my prayer worries as you're there, I want you to look at somebody on the thread and begin to pray for one another. I love this. <laughs> I love this, that we're not in a building, but we're able to sit and pray into each other's lives. I hope you're not just there watching, but that you're taking time, that you're praying, that you see somebody that's there on the stream, that you take time just to lift somebody up. Somebody's going, their, their daughter is going, has a cold. Strength of my husband's faith.
Amen. We want to allow you to continue to put in um, all the rest of your requests. As you guys continue praying and as you continue to pray home, I do want to encourage you, as I said earlier, if you just have some paper, if you have a pen, if you have a phone, um, oftentimes we pray and we will pray a prayer and we'll forget about it. We'll pray a prayer and we'll move on. I just want to encourage you. Like I said, we're going to be back here next week. We're going to be doing this for a while. So let's, let's go ahead and, 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 and be prepared. What I want you to do, I want you to write down some prayer requests that you have and I want you to continue to boldly pray for them. I actually saw somebody say pray for boldness. Uh, we're about to do that in just a moment. What I want you to do is, uh, you wrote them here on the stream, but I want you to maybe on your phone, maybe put on your notepad that you would just write down some prayers or maybe on a piece of paper, on a notepad, on a sticky note, on whatever on a napkin, whatever you find. I think you could just write down some prayers, some things that you need God to, to do, some things you want to see God to do. And I want you to begin to pray over those things all week. And we're going to be praying all, over those things. We're going to be praying over all the prayer requests that were listed in the chat. And we're going to just continue to pray. And we're going to pray next week over those same things that you're writing down. So I just want to give you just a moment. Hopefully you're with me that you would write those things down. Maybe it's on your phone, whatever it is. I want to encourage you to write, write it down. Sometimes we need to come before God boldly and ask for what we want ask for what we need. Stress, anxieties, praying for our seniors, yes. Father God, we just want to say thank you, God. And we're, right now we're coming before you boldly. God, I, I couldn't get to every single request that was listed, God, but you see all the names that are poured out on this on this stream God you saw the names God you saw all the requests all the healings that are needed God you see all the the anxieties and the the worries and the cancer God someone said praying for boldness God I pray for boldness for all of us God that we might have a spiritual boldness that we might be able to come to you and come to your throne and ask for what we need God and ask and we, right now we're asking that you would cover every single request that's listed God, somebody was too scared to write something down. Somebody wasn't comfortable writing it down, God. We're asking that you would touch whatever it is that's going on in their lives. Every single person who's watching right now, who's listening to the sound of my voice, has something that they need from you. And God, right now, we're believing. God, we're believing that, that you're going to come through. God, we're believing that you're going to handle our situation. God, we're believing that right now when things don't look like it, it might not look like you're coming through. God, we're believing and we're trusting your timing. God, we're trusting that, that you've got it under control. God, we're trusting that you have a plan. And so, God, we just lift up all these requests to you. God, we lift up every single thing boldly saying, God, take it saying, God, do it. And the things that we wrote down on the paper, God, the things that we wrote down on our phone, God, the things, we're going to continue to pray over those things. God, we're asking that you would do those things for us. And so I'm asking, God, that you would do the things that people wrote down so that when we come back next time, God, that we might have a testimony service, God, that we might be able to have time where we can testify and say, I wrote down that I needed a job, and this week I got a job. Lord, we're asking that those things that we wrote down, we're covering them right now because, God, we're going to come back here and we want to say that we're able to say, look what God did for me. So, God, I'm asking that you would cover every single thing that someone wrote down. And, I, I, God, we just say thank you. Thank you for being a God who's there. Thank you for being a God who, who's loving. Thank you for being a God who cares, for a God who can, who can comfort us in the time when we need it, God, a God who's always there. God for, God, for holding our hand through the moments, through the stress, through the anxiety. God, I'm praying for the stress and anxiety that we might allow that to subside because we know that you're with us. We know that you're there. We know that you care. And God, I say thank you. I ask that you would be with every single person who is watching, every single person who is listening in whatever way we need. God, we say thank you for what you've already done. And God, we say thank you for what we know you're going to do. In your precious name, we do pray. Amen. We want to uh, remind you at this time um, and open up the time for, for giving. Does anybody serve a faithful God? Amen. I, I hear you saying amen, but you didn't say it quite loud enough. Does anybody serve a faithful God? All right, there it is. Amen. Um, God has been so faithful um, to me. Um, and I, I don't know if he's been faithful to you, but when I look at the things that I have and the things that, 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 that he's allowed me to, to see and to do, he's been faithful. He's been faithful in every area of my life. And so I, I try to, and I, I know it is our, our practice to, to give when we go to church, but I want to encourage you to give from a place of just thankfulness. 
to give from a place of, man, God has done so much for me. How can I not give back to him? 